もしかしてお化けの射的や Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I know it's been a few weeks since I've reviewed a new game, so we're coming in strong today with Spooky Spirit Shooting Gallery, a pseudo light gun style port of Mashu Kashite Abake no Shate Kia. I hope I said that right, but I know I probably didn't. Anyways, this game was just released in early May to North America and even has a physical edition. What on earth is Spooky Spirit Shooting Gallery? Well, I will try to answer that question here. Game Kaisi! Before we dive into the gameplay, we should talk a little about the style and influences behind Spooky Spirit to better understand what on earth is going on. The game is heavily based on shooting arcade games, often found at Japanese festivals, as seen in the pictures here. These summer festivals are called Natsu Matsuri and feature carnival style games for kids, very similar to what you would see at any amusement park or fair in the US. The shooting style game involves paying tokens for toy bullets to shoot down prizes, and if you can knock any over, you win that prize. The game is oozing with Japanese lore, a lot of which I won't pretend to understand, but perhaps anyone out there with a larger knowledge of Japanese culture could comment with anything I missed here. Now, what does that mean for the actual game? Well, there are essentially three game modes in Spooky Spirit Shooting Gallery Carnival Mode, Party Mode, and Spirit Stairway Challenge all of which can be played locally with up to three players. In most of the game modes, you will unlock tokens to use to spend on spirit models and other collectibles with the goal of collecting all 120 figures in the game. That's pretty much the extent of the experience. There's no fancy story or super intriguing adventure mode. Spooky Spirit is very much a what you see is what you get type game. Nothing more, nothing less. Carnival mode seems to be the main game mode, I guess you would say, and essentially a digital recreation of the festival version of the real life game with several exceptions. When entering the game mode, you'll be able to choose from three different booths. At each of these booths, you'll have a minute or so to shoot as many objects off the shelf to earn tokens, and after that minute is up, the game will automatically rotate you to the next one. These tokens can be used to get more bullets, of which there are three types, cork, metal, and rockets. You will be switching between these bullets to knock over the various toys and objects based on their actual weight and size. The game controls like a light gun would, but obviously it's not an actual light gun, as modern TVs can't actually support that. It uses the gyro controls for the switch to mimic this. I found the controls to be very responsive, objects behave with realistic physics, and about a thousand times better than some other light gun style shooting Switch games I've played, like the Abominable Martian Panic, a game I really wanted to review for the channel, but for my own sanity, I had to stop playing. But that's a conversation for another day. The carnival game mode for Spooky Spirit plays extremely casually, almost like a free-for-all, where as long as you have tokens to spend, you can simply keep playing. The catch is that at every booth, there's a spirit or ghost hiding in one of the objects on screen. Once you find and collect enough of these ghosts, your spirit meter fills up, and you get transported to a haunted house level, and it's here where you can get even more tokens to try and capture all of the spirits. It would usually take me around 10 to 15 minutes or so during each play to get to the haunted house at the end. And that's pretty much it for carnival mode. For an adult, this gameplay loop grows pretty stale, even when surrounded by a lot of charm. But for kids, I would expect this to keep them entertained for a while. Outside of the carnival mode is party mode, where you can play the 20 or so minigames in versus or in co-op. 
There are six games not unlocked at the start, but I think I unlocked them all after just one carnival mode session, so that's really not a big deal. I found party mode to be way more entertaining than carnival mode, with half to two thirds of the mini games or so being quite fun, and created an old school arcade shooting experience for me, much of like the light gun games of yesterday. If you can play these with or against friends, then that is where the highlight of the game will probably fall into place for most players. The third game mode is the Spooky Staircase, which is a set minigame gauntlet of sorts that gets harder and harder as you play. This is easily my favorite game mode for both co-op and single player, with a second Spooky Staircase mode that unlocks once you beat the first. It creates a larger sense of purpose in the entire experience, and I found the spooky staircase to kind of be the saving grace in terms of things to do, and slightly eased my concern about the lack of overall content in the entire game. Functionally and technically speaking, Spooky Spirit Shooting Gallery performs well, and probably accomplishes what the developer intended the game to be, a mindless but entertaining representation of the popular festival game for kids. As a western release, the $40 price tag comes in a little high for the content since there is no nostalgic factor here at all, but as a game clearly targeting kids, perhaps they would get $40 worth of entertainment with it. Also, as someone who enjoys weird and unusual games, this is still a polished experience that I will be keeping in my Switch collection for the novelty of it and will even break it out every now and then. Peace out everyone.